Jeremy, just on that question of the West, I know that Damascus was on the Silk Road, mm -hmm. and what I found when I lived in Syria was mm -hmm. that was there's a great diversity of culture there, of religion, of of ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know much about that? Well, we know that. I think what you're saying is true. We know that up to the modern period, that in in these cultures, that people of various religious and ethnic backgrounds lived together quite comfortably. Like the, the Baghdad, for example, had a very large Jewish population up to 1914. That was all disrupted by the politics of the 20th century, you know. And and there were Jewish communities all across the Middle East, North Africa, kind of trading, dealing, living with other people. And when they left those countries, they looked back with great regret, you know, the older generation, the you know, the cultures they left behind. And there's this kind of, I think, this false narrative which has been very much developed by people like Bernard Lewis, you know, the way he talks, um, the clash of civilizations, which is his phrase, not Samuel Huntington's. Huntington borrowed it from Lewis. Lewis developed this in the 1960s to try to explain why the Arabs were angry with what he called the West. Now, there are very good reasons for the Arab people, the people in the Middle East, being angry with the West because the West had a very, very bad record. Well, Lewis explained this way by saying, well, you know, what happened was that two civilizations came into, came into conflict. You know, one was Western civilization, undefined, and the other was Arabic, Arab Islamic civilization. One triumphed, which of course was Western civilization, and the losers have never got over it. You know, it was simple as that. You know, and of course we did some things wrong, but, you know, n what we did was never bad enough to warrant the resentment they're directing against us. And, of course, with Lewis, he raised Palestine, and he dismisses it. Or Palestine, the licensed grievance, and he calls it, you know, just dismissed out of hand. You know, so Lewis is, Bernard Lewis himself, as one individual, has played a large part because he's a guru figure in developing a sense of division, right, between Islam and the West, or Islam, even worse, Islam against the West. And this was taken up by Samuel Huntington in the 1990s. And, you know, this is a kind of a picture of separated civilizations, civilizations essentially in conflict, and now coming much more into open conflict. Now, there's an alternative view, very, very strongly based historically. You know, you can go back to Martin Bernal, uh, Black Athena, marvellous study. You know, he argued that the origins of so-called Western civilization lie in Africa, that the source of Western civilization was afro nilotic and when he wrote that in Black Athena, he came under the most tremendous attack. And 30 to 40 years later, the attacks continuing. They just can't stand it, you know. And um, then we have to uh, we um, uh, go to, to studies by the British historian um, uh, John John Hobson, you know. And he deals with the extent to which the West, uh, what it did, uh, was enabled by what it borrowed from the East, what was taken from China, what was taken from the Islamic world. And the more you study, the more you see a pattern of interdependence, of borrowing, of trading, of relationships, of borrowing in terms of philosophy, art, uh, you know, navigation, science, iron smelting, the whole thing. And so these civilizations, in fact, so-called civilizations separated in the minds of some, were based on a long, long tradition of kind of interdependence and kind of, you know, working together. And so the, the Lewis line, you know, Islam versus the West, or clash of civilizations, you know, is misleading and presents a misleading picture, you know. And Syria, of course, is right at the heart of this, so, as you pointed out, right in the middle of the trading road between East and West. Syria's great traders. They went in all directions, okay? They went to North Africa, they founded colonies there, Carthage, went everywhere, you know. And, uh, you know, those traditions, those historical patterns have lasted down to the present day. You know, and you know, you've been, you know, Syria much better than me. I've been there several times. I love Syria. People are very easygoing, very curious, very flexible, interested in other cultures. They didn't have any kind of sense of animosity towards other people at all. It's, it's nonsense. It's, it's a libel. You know, so the way that you know, so Syria's own history, you know, fits very much into this bigger history, this broader history of of interrelationship with people of other cultures and other civilizations.